All right, everybody. In this video, I'm going to go over a bunch of stuff and really dive into what I've done to create this game. I know a lot of people have been asking about it. I really want to take you behind the scenes in the development, uh, all the stuff that you don't see really in the game. Um, but before we dive into that, I want to tell you guys that I put my game up on Steam Greenlight. So let's check this out real fast here. I threw it up, uh, what, yesterday? Um, I already got like 700 votes, so that's pretty sweet. Um, and a bunch of people have been saying some things. I mean, I guess a lot of these guys, they're like, hey, it looks cool. Um, dang, man, I worked hard on this thing, so it better look cool, right? Anyway, so it looks pretty sweet. And I want to go over a bunch of stuff, like what I've done to really make this happen. So hopefully if you guys are out there and you're like, hey, I'm interested in creating a game and putting it up on Steam, the whole process. So I'm going to go over this as quickly as possible so this video isn't like six hours long because literally I could sit here and tell you all day how to do stuff. And I'm not saying that I'm the best at it, but I'm saying I'm going to let you know some things that I've done that worked for me um, that have really, that, uh, that I wish I knew when I first started. Anyway, so there's that. So if you have a chance, come over here to Steam um, and just vote it up because... It would it would be so awesome if I could put this on, then everyone could play it, um, and that would be really really fun for everyone. For me, for me, it would be really fun for me, and I just really want to help people uh, create their games. And uh, so, if you didn't know, like four months ago, I mean, I didn't know anything about game development. Well, not anything. I mean, I played a bunch of games, you know, like any other person. Um, but I just woke up one day and was thinking, man, I just want to do this. So I just did. So every day I've worked on this for the last four months. Um, so this is a, a give or take a few days, about 120 days into it. So four months. And uh, it's been so fun. It's been just like really fun, really challenging. Um, so just to give you guys some 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 information about what it takes to – what it took me anyway – to create this and really it's basically almost done probably 85 percent done um, the only thing I have to do left really is work on some animations finish building a little bit of the game map but the game maps pretty much done um, I have to optimize uh, I've got to move all my my characters in the right position because right now I've got them all clumped up so I can test everything at once so it doesn't take me hours and hours and hours to run through the whole map and and try to do it um, try to make sure everything works and then just kind of figure out a few more you know little minor things and it's pretty much good to go oh by the way so I'm gonna launch a Kickstarter if you wanna buy the game um, it's probably gonna just be like ten bucks uh, hopefully as many people as possible will do that because man I've spent so much time just like doing this it's taking me forever um, not forever I mean I've gone pretty quickly anyway so let's dive into this um, so just the first things like I was talking about it's on green light if you could go there uh, if you have a steam account just go and vote yes that would, that would mean a lot to me um, and just support it you know anyway there's there's a lot of good things to check out around here okay so let's dive into the back end of developing what I call Ruction, um, the Golden Tablet, 3D open world adventure game. Um, I'm going to go over a bunch of stuff like, uh, uh, where should I start? Okay, let's start with um, my dialogue. So I'm going to open this up. I really want to show you kind of the editor everything in my editor I want to show you so you can maybe check it out you can see what I've done uh, maybe you can learn from it so I'm using a program um, an asset called uh, dialogue systems and so what that enables me to do is create dialogues in game for the player um, our player which is this guy right here 
he can interact with uh, any any NPC. You know, they create a conversation. So what we've got here, um, here let's move this over here so we can get some of this. Make this a little bit bigger so you can see what's going on. Okay, so this is the main part of the game is the dialogue. Uh, so we've got our actors, we've got all the the guys we interact with, we've got our quests or like missions or tasks, whatever you want to call them, and you you set them up. Um, and just to go over every piece it would just take hours and hours and hours. So we won't go over every piece, but I just want to show you like a general setup, like what I've done. Um, so you've got all your your missions and things. Uh, I'm not using locations, variables. So now these, um, the variables are like stuff that you can refer to in the game that to make the your tasks work. And I'll explain that in a second. So here's conversations. Um, all the conversations in the game, and I've got them up set up by visual nodes. Uh, you can see, like, if you come up and talk to someone. It depends. Let's say, for example, you start the game. Let's go to the very beginning. Game start conversation. Very simple, very basic. Um, you start off, right? And you come here, and the guy's like, hi. right? And here's the dialogue, this section here. So this is the way I set it up. He just talks. He's like, here's an objective. Here's a mission. And I set it up where he says, every person says something. When you go up and talk to him, they're like, what's up? How's it going? Um, and you have to write it so there has to be a condition so if you go up and talk to someone uh, it has so they'll say different things depending on where you are in the game so if you've already done this task next time you go up and talk to the person they'll say something different if you're currently on the task and you talk to them he will say something else um, so what happens is you come up and the first time you talk to him it'll say this and it's unassigned so the mission is find the gun seller right so everything's going to be unassigned, and then you accept it, and now you set it to active. So that's kind of the approach uh, in its active. I've got all these other things like um, the mini map marker. So like you go to your, uh, let's see, how do I explain this? Um, so in the game, you've got your the little mini map, mini map on the top right. So when you accept it, it'll put the little exclamation mark. Uh, appear it'll appear on there so let me show you real quick here and this is just one of the things so let's just say this little mini map marker right here see this guy so that'll appear in the mini map um, let's see if I've got it turned on yeah I do so mini map so you come here so I've got this script right here called the mini map marker or sorry map marker you drop in your thing you drop in your sprite which is like the little image right this little exclamation mark and then you say the size and if it's active or not whatever uh, but that'll appear when you start this qu or when you uh, when you're about to take the quest just to let you know that there's a quest just like World of Warcraft basically um, and then when you take it when you push accept um, so I have the mini map on this specific person. It'll show the question mark. Let's see. Because all this is all this is is you go and you find the person. So right when you push accept, this one goes inactive. So that thing goes inactive and then the other one sets to question mark. Anyway. So that's just one thing. And then you don't you come up and talk to them when you're on the task and it'll say something else. Hey, did you find this? And then when you're done, Oh, this specific one is different. Um, anyway, so you're going to get the point. Let me show you something a little more complicated. Uh, so this one, it gets like extremely complicated. You've got this huge thing. Um, and you need to create a situation for every possible scenario. So... And just to make this as, try to explain this as simple as possible, uh, this person is giving two two missions to you, two tasks, two quests, and you have to set it up where 
if you finish both of them at the same time, it'll come over here and say this. If you just want to do one quest and turn in the one, then it'll say something else. Like it, it just gets so dang complicated. So extremely complicated. Um, because then, look, if you go to the outline, there's like this outline mode. You come to this double tree. So there's all this you got to write so much and i didn't really realize it was like this until i started doing it like you you imagine like world of warcraft these guys that they offer like five quests i'm like holy crud man like holy cow you they offer so many quests and the the i can't imagine how long and complex the the dialogue system would be for a, a quest line like that and I've I'm learning really ex how long it takes um, and it really is extremely complicated sometimes like you start off with the first one so dang easy right and then you get into like more complicated stuff and then I got into this other one where uh, like this one so it's like just arrows going every direction and this isn't really the hard part the hard part is making it work like making it work the way you want um, and this specific one, you present a password um, to the guy. Oh, I didn't show you what the password was, did I? Because I'm going to have to change it if you all saw it. <laughs> anyway, so I think you kind of get the idea um, about some of these. So th this is how I set it up. And a lot of them are like this. It's just like really, really nuts. Um, and it it was kind of hard at first to figure it out, um, but then after a while I got pretty good at it. Um, but even then, I'm still I'm still like if I change something, uh, some other things I've got to fix. Um, I want to show you guys this, just like things how how I went about it. Um, this is actually a uh, an a door you can you present the password to the guy he's gonna be right here here let me just turn some of this stuff on for you guys and this is this is when you run through the map uh, these areas will be activated and deactivated so here's scene two this is everything right so when you run in here scene two is gonna be activated and what will happen is this will be activated right here when I click this everything will appear BAM oh wait a minute <laughs> oh, sorry, wrong one, wrong one, wrong one. Sorry, wrong one, this one, right here. When I click this one, everything will appear. <laughs> Boom! I'm like, oh shoot, what happened? Um, okay, so you come over here, you present the password, and he's like, all right, you can go in here. So, let's click on this. So, for example, one of the things I did, um, so this door is just a static, it's just a door. And then when you, in the quest line, when you finish the quest, we present the password, you give it to them. What will happen is this will be deactivated, and this will be activated. So you won't actually see anything change. Um, what happens is now, see this door, there's nothing here. Like you can't, you can't use it, you can't do anything. But then you click on this, and now you can use it. I added a usable script destroy on use so it'll destroy when I use it uh, and it'll play this sequence the sequence trigger it, the, I'll make it do some things when it's used so on use I change this to this and this program is uh, I'm using um, dialogue systems so this it helps you kinda do all this stuff so I animated the door so it'll play the animation and it'll also play the sound but but it'll only do these things if these quest conditions are whatever I set it to. So relay the password. So when I give them the password successfully, it'll do this. If this if this uh, isn't successful, uh, it won't work. It won't do anything at all. Here, let me show you. Oh wait, not here. Oh, also, let me just go into this too. So part of the the process of creating this game let me show you all the stuff that I've created so I got this folder for all my stuff I got models assets audio backups playable games characters designs dialogues map database just textures tech 
just you know stuff that's helped me like I'll come in here and I'll be like oh let's click on one of these quest trigger just stuff to help me remember what the heck I'm doing um, all right I got scripts screenshots just tons of stuff what was I gonna show you in here uh, here let's look at this backups for example so I got like here let's check this out so my I have like six or seven hard drives, but to make my computer go faster, I unplug them. <laughs> the ones I don't need. Anyway, so I got this uh, SSD. It's my uh, solid state hard drive, which, by the way, if you don't have one, dude, I just learned that it just takes forever to load up your huge file, at least my huge file, um, when creating this. And here's my four terabyte. It's almost full. Dude, I swear I filled up like two terabytes with backups. Um, I put all my game backups on here, and I have another one in here, and then I have other backups somewhere else. Oop, not that. What am I doing? Anyway, I don't know what I was doing there. Okay, here's like all my backups. So I started this in February, and I've got uh, almost a hundred backups. So I backed it up like every day, because when I first started, I'll tell you the first thing um, when I started is I didn't know that much, right? And I still am learning, right? But when I first started, I didn't know Jack, dude. I was just trying to survive. So if I learned, man, if I didn't back it up, I would be so in trouble. I honestly would not be where I am today if I didn't make these backups. Because I broke the thing, man. I broke it. I broke it hard. I broke my entire game. Like, you do stuff, you and it lags, and you just can't figure out why. Or you, you like, delete the scene accidentally, and you save over. Just, oh my gosh, so much stuff. I swear, if you don't back it up, you just be in so much trouble. Um, now it's not as bad because I know a lot more, like, what I'm doing. So I don't back it up as much. I'll back up, like, every few days instead of every day. Look at this, multiple times a day. 22nd, boom, boom. Three times the one day. Two times, two times just one day. Anyways, and then all the way down to uh, a few days ago. So I haven't backed up for a few days because I haven't really done very much because I've been working on my Steam Greenlight. Um, I made these two trailers. Uh, the first trailer is a cinematic. The second trailer is uh, a gameplay trailer. I'll throw those up on my channel pretty soon here. Um, okay, so anyway, so this is just that's just one thing. Like I'm showing you this door, right? So that's that's what happens. Here. Oh, I know what I was looking for here. Let me show you this. Um, so I got my videos, right? All these videos I created. Third person climbing, collider glitch. And oh, what I was going to tell you was this. One of the other things that I really, 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 really emphasize is that I would not be able to do this without the support of like the development community. I'm not kidding. Like, I've spent so much time on the Unity. I'm using Unity, right? Using any 3D. I spent so much time on Unity 3D forums, just like asking questions um, on other assets I got. I I spent time on there, like figuring out how to use their asset. And quite honestly, without support for a complicated asset, it's basically worthless. Like you need their help, if, unless you're like a pro already, you know how to use it. But but no one knows how to use the asset you just bought or you just got. Like no one knows how to use it, so you need you need help unless you can figure it out yourself. Uh, which I did. I figured out tons by myself, but there's a lot of things that just like you can't do it, uh, or it would take forever if you don't have their help. Um, I was checking the stats the other day, uh, how much I've I've put. Uh, well, sorry, what, like how many posts I've posted on forums, and I posted about 300 posts, 300 questions and comments, um, and it's just a ton. Like I spent a ton. I even tried to sell a few things on the asset store, which I got rejected. But I'm like, dude, I don't know why it looks awesome. I'm using it in my game. Um, okay, so that's just some information, like to get started. You're like, you need you need backups. You need um, you need a lot of help. You know, spend some time on the forums. Like, I swear, dude, it takes so much time, but it is so worth. There's no other way to do it unless you have someone right here helping you. You know, um, unless you unless you spent like 10 years, like however long already learning all the whole thing but come on all of us are like in a similar boat well not all of us you know you may be a pro you may be a pro already right all right so here's my hierarchy just tons of stuff 
I have like 40,000 objects in my in my scene. So I built all of it when I first started. I thought it'd be a good idea to like load different scenes. Like you go into an area and it's going to like load the new area, right? And I actually tried that. I tried doing that and it worked kind of. I mean, it worked, but it was just like lag. It just, you know, it would load, it would take a few seconds and then and then you just have to like things you, you want things to save across a different scene and it was just I don't know, it was a lot of work. And I did it in, initially so I could build my treetop area up here. Um, so I could build this. What the heck? Where am I? Um, so I could build this area because I didn't want everything to be like lagging when I came up here because there's so much stuff. Uh, so then I thought, let's just make like load scenes, right? But then it was just getting so complicated and it just wasn't working the way I wanted. So then I just thought, you know what? Let's just drop everything into one scene. Um, but because I have so many objects, uh, let me show you some things that I've done that have helped me uh, with this open world. Okay, there's quite a few things. So the first thing is, the thing that helped the most by far was what I'm doing here. Uh, disabling and enabling areas. So uh, you won't be able to see all this is gone, right? So this is the, this is the bottom area, or one of the areas, right? Um, so what happens is this goes away and this loads and you don't even know because I just covered it with trees you know because you're up so high it doesn't even matter and that's the way it does, did stuff because just by having it in in the scene it just takes up memory it just takes up and I could be wrong about it. I don't know if I, I assume it takes up memory because uh, then it so it just like takes load time it's not even you're not even looking at it and you're thinking oh why don't you just add occlusion culling right so let's come over here, and I did. The thing is, I did, um, but it only helps so much. Like, it it helps you a lot because it only shows what you're looking at, which helps a lot. But it doesn't it doesn't help you, at least for this anyway. From what I've seen, it does not help you when you've got so many uh, so many dang objects in your scene. It's just incredible. So what you do for this um, occlusion cooling basically it it only loads what you can see so it doesn't load everything at once and it, it helped it helped a ton um, let me see if I can show you the visuals for this uh, let's see oh, oh okay 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 here let's just click on this uh, wait that's not it shoot what the heck am I doing right now um, object I thought you could just click on this and it should show everything I don't know, we'll come back to this in a second. I obviously don't know where it went, what I'm doing here. Uh, <laughs> let me come back to that. I, I know exactly what I've been doing with this. I just haven't dealt with this for like a few weeks. I forgot about it. I, said, I thought you could just click on this and it like shows you the stuff. I don't know, we'll come back to that in a minute. I'll think about it. Let me think about it. Okay, okay. Here's something else I'm using. Uh, I'm using this thing called Quick Brush. Um, let me turn this off. I'm using this thing called Quick Brush, uh, where all you do is it, you could lay down like thousands of plants at one time. Oops, what the heck? What's going on here? Here, let's test this out. So, what the? Oh, maybe I... Can I change that? Hold on, I'm going to show you guys what the heck is going on here. Um, let's turn this off. So what you do is you hold it down and it just... Dude, why is this... Oh, no wonder. Oh, gosh, no wonder. See, things like this happen all the time. No freaking wonder. Things like this happen all the time. See this up here? Little eraser. I forgot that if you can switch it by pushing Control X, and then you can. There we go. Cheesh, man. That happens all the time. You're just like, why isn't it working? I've got it all set up. Um, it just like blows your mind. You just sit there and you think about it for like, who knows how long? Some stuff I've taken hours. I'm like looking at it. I'm like, it should work, you know? And then you're like, oh, one, one thing like one little thing like that right there 
Anyway, so what this enables you to do is add like thousands of plants like all at once and you can add even more than this at once but this is just what I'm showing you um, so you're like hey let me just do this let me just add some palm trees you're like BAM I just added like 20 palm trees in like one second um, and it's extremely helpful for to this land I was I was literally placing when I first started I was literally placing every one of these like piece by friggin piece um, and I thought to myself, there is no way I can keep doing this. <laughs> so I looked online and I found this this quick brush. I promise this has been like a dream come true for me, this this tool. Um, let me show you this real fast. So this right here, so I created a cinematic trailer for the game, which you'll want to check out uh, right here. What's it doing? Um, just come to the page and watch it. It's actually, it's, I don't know, it's pretty good, I guess. I mean, it's okay. It's the best I could do. Let's just put it that way. All right. So, let me show you part of this. And this is creating, I just created it straight into my scene. I didn't even care about creating a new scene because it was just too too much of a hassle to, like, import all this stuff. Okay. Oh, not that. Where is it? Streets. Okay. Check this out. It's like an entire, like, thing. I just created it, dropped it right in here. And then what happens is these guys will move around. They'll say some stuff. Um, just go and watch the trailer. It's actually it's pretty cool. Um, and then I'll just that'll just won't be there. And then this is the other part of the cinematic trailer. This will not be here in the game. Obviously, it's just like floating uh, bedroom scene. Okay. So this is also one of the scenes in the cinematic trailer. I just created this. Um, Switch over to game view. This is actually what it looks like. Oh, here's the mini map. So you'll see that in the game, that mini map, and then you'll be able to like question marks and stuff on there. Um, what I did, I just set the camera, and so you can take this out. Ah, come here. You can take this out and watch. You move the camera. Oh, look at that. Sweet, right? Um, you can move all this stuff around in Unity 3D. So if you haven't tried Unity, it's like super fun. Uh, lots to do. It's really powerful, extremely powerful. Um, anyway, so I created this little bedroom scene for uh, part of the cinematic, and then you just delete that. Oh, by the way, so this right here does not come with Unity. Um, I also got this. It's like a, and it's called hierarchy navigation, whatever. You can control it all from right in here, and I don't know how I would do. It just like makes my life a hundred, hundred times easier. Uh, to use this asset also. All right, let's see. What else can we discuss about this? Um, so this is, I created these triggers all around the map using the inspector. Oh, what's this? Here we go. So these triggers, as you run through them, as you run around the world, uh, like I was talking about using these sequence triggers, it activates things um, or deactivates uh, different areas as you run around. <coughs> Um, let's see here. And so, oh, let me show you this. So I spent a bunch of time doing this one, uh, this scene right here. Uh, let's see. All my stuff's up here. Where is it? Uh, I think it's there. Right here. Yeah, here we go. So just to create an area like this, for example, so you've got a bunch of lights, all these little lights right here, right? all these different lights you can move them around it's pretty sweet um, I've got waterfalls I've got this trees uh, these little areas are these are butterflies are in this area there's birds in this area um, let's turn this on scene 8 alright so you come over here I've even got these little animated a uh, little animation. Oh, okay, let me explain this, too. This is something I just had to figure out on my own that I was, like, super ticked off for the longest time. I could not figure it out. I was like, I don't know how to do this. Not because... Uh, I just didn't know. I just did not know how to do it. I was like, I'm a total noob, right? <laughs> At least I was. Uh, not anymore. I graduated from noobness. Um, let me explain something. So, let's say you come over here. Uh to my editor 
all this stuff, right? Okay. So let's say you want to animate this little guy. So what you need to do is create a controller first. See this right here? Animator controller. Boom. So what you do is you click on that. It'll pull up where it is in your little project window. So this right here, what you do is you right click, just you know, if you want to know, right click, you create uh animator controller. You click on this, it'll pull up this little thing, you name it whatever you want. What you do is you click on it, come up here, animator. Okay, so this area is all the animations for this little guy. So my little leopard. Oops. Um, and this was extremely, dude, if I knew this when I started, it would save me so much time. But it's like the simplest thing, and, and a lot of things are like this. If you know, you just makes your life easier. I just didn't know when I first started. But now I know, so hopefully I can help you guys. <sighs> so what you do is you get these animations. Um, and I'm not going to go over you know, like creating an animation, but if you get the animation, this is where you do it. You drop it in here. Okay, fine. Let me just go over it real fast. All right. Let's just let's see. Uh, oops, not that one. Animation. Where's my animations? All right, here we go. So these are these are animations. These things right here. You can see it, right? You can see what the animation is. You click on it. So you take this, you drag it in here, and when you drop it inside, it creates one of these. So then you take it, you click on it. Uh, you don't need to worry about this. Or not. I mean, you could if you want, but whatever. Um, so you set this to default. You just click on this. Um, set a layer default, it'll turn orange. And then you just create the arrows, make transition, bam, to each one. And it'll play in order. It'll just loop. It'll loop, 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 loop all day. These ones, I don't. he's not attacking anything, right? So you don't attack. Um, but if you were to look at this in the game, he would just play the animation over and over again. It's like he'll like dink around and paw the ground and whatever. And this exact same thing is with uh, like these guys. Um, you give them, oh, not that guy actually. Let me get someone that actually has their own animations. I know that this girl does right here. Um, and you have to set up the character. Like, it's just a bunch of stuff to do that. Anyway. You gotta make sure they're humanoid. So I created this girl controller. So let me show you what she does. Oh, she just does one thing, I guess. So she'll play her little animation, and then she'll she'll wait. Um, so she like kicks the ground or something. Um, okay. Anyway, that's animator controller. So if you didn't know how to set up animations, that's how you do it. I was like trying to figure out for the longest time. Like I just didn't know. And then I just watched the YouTube video and I learned it in like five minutes. <laughs> it's like you guys are watching this one. Um, what else can I go over here? I mean, there's so much stuff to go over. Like in this scene right here, we have triggers. I could probably just delete that. It doesn't even matter. I'm not using that anymore. Um, let's see. What was I working on recently? Recently, I was working on the cinematic trailer. For like this whole week, I just worked on cinematic so then I could start this green light. Um, uh, the green light, like campaign or whatever you call it. Um, so I, you know, I think that's all for now. And what new stuff have I created since last we talked? Um, I created a bunch of some secret stuff that I'm not going to show you. Uh, and that's pretty much it, I think. So. Like I created this treetop area. I was really was talking about that in the last video. Um, I wanted to create that, so I did. These hanging vines. So it's sweet. You're gonna come up here and do some stuff. Um, I might even extend it out more here. But that's kind of like the process. So, like I got. You need a hard drive space. You know some things to help you. Occlusion culling um, to help you with a huge map. And this video has been super long so far, so I think we're going to stop it there. But but that's kind of, hopefully that helps some of you guys just kind of get started. But uh, let me know if you have any comments in the section. Uh, leave them in the section below. And 
it would really help me out and it'd probably be a lot of fun for a lot of people to try out this game um, on Steam. So if you have a chance, go on there and vote. Just vote yes and hopefully we can all have fun playing it. Um, I've spent like tons of time doing this and I love making these videos for you guys. So hopefully it helps you and really, if anything, hopefully this inspires some of you guys to just just stick to it, man. Like, I've, I mean, I've sacrificed a lot of things to, to make this happen. I mean, I've, I still have fun. I play hockey twice a week, and I hang out with, uh, with my wife and my baby. So, um, and I've, I've been doing this for a while. So, um, yeah. Let me, you, let me know what you guys think. Uh, if you want anything else, let me know if you guys want me to go over some some more stuff. Um, but that's pretty much it now. Just make sure you guys go and check out the uh, the Steam Greenlight um, just over here in Steam. Just come over here, click the little yes button, and uh, we'll see if we can get this up on Steam. Okay, uh, thanks for watching, and I will see you guys next time. Bye.